In this experiment, we will be measuring the acceleration due to gravity. As everyone knows, the gravitational acceleration on Earth is roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. To do so, we will be dropping a marble on a ramp and letting it roll down. By disregarding friction forces, the net force will be fgx, or the horizontal component of gravity. We can equate the two equations, then cancel out mass, and rearrange the formula and isolate g to get g equals acceleration over sine theta. To find acceleration, we use the list of formulas we use the displacement formula, and by manipulating certain variables, we could eliminate the first term since the initial velocity is zero. Isolating A, we could use two times the displacement over time squared, with displacement as the length of the ramp. For the time and angle of elevation, we use the FIFOX app's acoustic stopwatch and inclination tool. As shown, we recorded the data of the time intervals, which have an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.0005. The lamp's length is measured at roughly 83.3 centimeters plus or minus 0.05 centimeters. To demonstrate, we use the first test as an example. Since 0.0005 is so minuscule, it can be disregarded. Therefore, the uncertainty calculated is plus or minus 0.01 centimeters meters per second squared. Recalling the situational formula established earlier, we calculated the value to get 6.911. Since we have theta, we can find g. For the measured angle, it was 45 degrees. Dividing 6.911 by sine 45, we get a final result for g, which is 9.77 meters per second plus or minus 0 0.01. Here are the resulting calculations for the other trials. With every experiment, there has to be sources of error. First, we assume no friction because a metal marble and wood should be very minimal. That is a major one. The acoustic stopwatch on VFOX might have had minimal delays because the sound takes a while to register, or it might have picked up other noises. We also neglected these two numbers in our calculations because they were insignificant enough that they won't interfere with our results. The marble might not have landed at the same spot on the board, which caused a difference in time and displacement. The marble did not start really immediately on the board. It took a brief moment of time for the velocity to be positive and not zero. The angle didn't stay perfectly on 45 and it bounced back and forth between 44.98 and 45.03, and we just took the median. We chose 45 because it's in the middle of 0 and 90. We tried a low angle like 17 degrees and using the same board, that didn't work. The time we got was 1 second, and when we entered it into the same formulas, for g, we got 45 meters per second squared, uncertainty 0 0.01. We also used 72 degrees, but that didn't work either. We used the same board again, and we got around 0 0.38 seconds, and using the same formulas, we got 12 meters per second squared for g, uncertainty 0 0.01. Why didn't these times give us the correct results? At 17, it was harder to get the marble to start rolling, more friction was involved. At 72, more free falling than accelerating due to FGX was involved. Thanks for listening and have a nice day. Hi, this is Aaron from Fleetwood Park Secondary School Physics Team. And our group's experiment was designed to determine the value of gravitational acceleration on Earth. We first set it up our experiment by putting a soft mattress on the ground and by setting up a meter stick vertically to the surface. We made sure that the meter stick is vertical to the surface by using a plumb bob. After the plumb bob comes to a rest, we will then align the sides of the meter stick with the string of the plumb bob. And after setting these up, we will then open the Firefox app on our phone. For this experiment, we will be using the acceleration without G function in the Firefox app. And we will also be recording a total of 15 sets of data for every 10 centimeters, starting from 50 centimeters all the way up to 2 meters. For every each of the chosen heights of the 15, we will be aligning the bottom of our phone with the height line and make sure our phone is vertical to the surface. And after I've done all that, I will then press the start function on the Firefox app. After a few seconds, I will let go of my phone, letting my phone drop from rest and enter a free fall motion. I will then press stop on the app and I'll be exporting the data as Excel spreadsheets to our computers for further processing. After exporting our data, our next job was to determine when is the phone in freefall motion. 
We mark the beginning of, free, of our free fall by finding the time in which the first abnormal absolute acceleration occurs. And we mark the end of our free fall by finding the time in which the y acceleration first becomes positive after the start of the free fall. We then neglect 0 .0, 0 0.1 seconds from the beginning and 0 0.2 seconds from the end. We then take the values of absolute accelerations in between and calculate their average. We then calculate the uncertainty of this value. And we're going to do the same thing for all 16 sets of data. After we've done that, we will organize these data into a new sheet. Here we will calculate the average of the value and the average of the uncertainty to get our final answer. The main physics principle we used is F net equal to Fg sin theta minus fraction force. Um, after we did some algebra, we got the total acceleration equal to g times sin theta minus mu cosine theta. And then substitute 2d over t squared to the original equation. Then we got our final equation with x value and y value, and g will be the slope. Here are all materials we'll use in the experiment. We will measure the fg first and then drag the block in a constant speed to measure the FF. Then we need to measure the distance. Now we got FG and FF. Since FG equal to the normal force, we can calculate the mu. After that, we can substitute all the constant value we got to our equation. We will use our phone to measure the initial angle and the final angle, and use final angle to subtract the initial angle to get the angle of the ramp. Then we will use acoustic timer to measure the time of the block slide from the ramp. We will do each angle for three times and calculate the average time. Use average time to do the calculation to reduce the error. We did 10 angles in total and we got 10 pairs of x and y value. We put all of these values into an Excel and create a scatter diagram. Here's our x and y value, and here's our diagram. We will draw a best fit line to reduce uncertainty, and the slope of the best fit line will be our g value. The main physics principle we used was the period of a pendulum formula. So in order to carry out the experiment in a scientific fashion, we did everything as follows. We had a coffee table to use as a basis for our pendulum, which consisted of four ropes of equal length, four clips, and electrical tape. An iPhone 6 was used to run the Fiat Fox app because we found that it had the least amount of air resistance compared to other phones we had at our disposal. The phone was 30.5 centimeters below the top of the pendulum, which had an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.05 centimeters, and this was calculated using a ruler. We didn't measure how far back we released, we released the phone every time because a pendulum should stabilize after a while, as in the period of a pendulum formula, the height will cancel out, so it doesn't matter the height at which the object is dropped at. Finally, the start delay was 3.0 seconds and 10.0 seconds for the experiment duration. The data that was recorded was a value of G and it was calculated using the pendulum feature in the FIAFOX app. The data was then processed by exporting the experiment as raw data in an Excel sheet. By analyzing the rotation of the phone at different time increments, we were able to determine where the pendulum had passed through one period. Here is the Excel sheet.
I have indicated here each time where the rotation of the x-axis was zero. This tells us that the phone was parallel to the floor. And by taking these increments between every other point, we can measure the period. And that comes out to be 1.1382 plus or minus 5.0 times 10 to the negative five seconds. We caught this uncertainty by comparing different time increments and seeing where they differ and how much by how much. Now to calculate gravity, we took the formula of a period of a pendulum and algebraically manipulated it to solve for gravity using the experimentally obtained values. Now here you can see the work that we showed out and you can see that the time for each period was 1.1382 and the length of the pendulum was 0 0.305 meters. And what you see underneath is me us converting the absolute uncertainty into the relative uncertainties. We did this because we, would no we knew that we had to multiply and divide the uncertainties later on. Now you see us doing the work of manipulating the formula to obtain G, which in the end came out to be 9.2944 plus or minus an uncertainty of 0.173%. Now by taking this algebraically derived um, G term, we can compare it to the values that we got from the experiment. Here is an Excel sheet of all these different values and you see that they match up quite well. And even the ones that stray are within the bounds of the uncertainty. Hello, my name is Sunch. Hello, my name is Min, and we're glad to be a part of the UBC Physics Olympics 2021. And this project is purposed to find the gravitational acceleration on Earth. Essentially, we're going, we're going to be using the Torricelli's law in order to figure out the horizontal velocity of the water coming out of a container. We'll take the distance it travels over the time that it takes for it to drop, and that would equal to horizontal velocity. And the velocity equals to the square root of the 2gh. So now we're going to measure the distance that it travels. So the first trial. Here. Yes. Okay, exactly here. So that is, that is 58 centimeters, 58.2. Second trial. Second trial. Here. Again, very close. Yeah. Just on the line. That is 50. 8.4 Again on the line. And that is 58.67. The first trial we got 0 0.399. Now the second trial. Second trial we got 0 0.470 seconds. And now the third trial. And in the third trial, we got 0 0.413 seconds. Now here's a diagram of our project. The values are recorded uh, below the diagram. Our time recordings are as follows. Here, when we take the average, our time is going to be 0 0.427 with an, with an uncertainty of um, 0 0.15 seconds. Horizontal distance it traveled, again, the data are here. The average is 0 0.585 plus or minus 0 0.0015 meters. So that, so that allows us to calculate the horizontal velocity of the water. When we take the distance divided by time, uh, including the uncertainties, that would give us 1.37 plus or minus 0 0.60 meters per second. Uh, meters per second. Uh, and now we're going to integrate the Torricelli's law. When we do that, uh, the velocity uh, is going to become uh, the square root of 2gh, the height of the water. And therefore, when we simplify the equation, uh, we get a value of gravity 9.79 plus or minus 4.5 uncertainty.